you know, when you're trying to get AI to do something specific and it just doesn't quite get it, the answer is OK, but not really what you were after. Oh, absolutely. It's a common frustration. Well, something just landed that might actually fix that. People are buzzing about it, calling it the uh, new Bible of prompt engineering. That's the one. Okay. Yeah. And it's not just, you know, another listicle. This document, it feels different. It's really digging into how we should be talking to models like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, mm -hmm. even Grok. Exactly. Prompt engineering, basically, the way we write our instructions for the AI. It's kind of the secret sauce, isn't it? It really is. And this document, the reason it's making waves is it seems packed with a more advanced practical ways to do it. Yeah. Stuff most people probably haven't even considered. Right. It feels like it's moving beyond the basic tips we've all seen. And it's landing just when we need it, I think. AI is everywhere now in our work, our lives. Knowing how to steer it properly is becoming, well, fundamental. Less of a techie skill, more yeah, essential. Could degree more. So that's our mission today. We're going to unpack this so-called Bible, pull out the really useful bits, the actual strategies. Yeah, cut through the jargon. Exactly. Show folks how to turn those fuzzy ideas into like crystal clear instructions that actually work. Get the AI doing what you want it to do. The goal is really to make AI's power genuinely accessible. You shouldn't need, you know, a computer science degree for this. Totally. This document seems aimed at that unlocking the advanced stuff for everyone. Which brings us nicely to the first big point it makes, doesn't it? This idea that uh, you don't need to be a data scientist. Everyone can write a prompt. Yeah, that jumps right out. It sounds almost too simple at first. It does, maybe. But they immediately follow it up with the crucial bit. Okay, anyone can type words into a chat window, sure. Yeah. But writing a good prompt, one that actually gets you quality results, accurate information, that's a whole different ball game. That's the real key, isn't it? Like anyone can swing a golf club, but hitting the ball straight, that takes technique. Exactly. A good prompt is like a super precise GPS for the AI. It tells it exactly where to go. Whereas a vague prompt is like just mumbling, take me somewhere nice to your GPS. <laughs> It'll end up somewhere probably not where you intended. Spot on. Good prompts give context. They set boundaries. They give direction. Without that, you get, well, noise, generic stuff, wrong stuff. You know, the document had this cool little tangent about the word abracadabra. Oh, yeah. Apparently, it might come from an old phrase meaning something like, I create as I speak. Huh. Interesting. Which is kind of what we're doing, right? Speaking things into existence with AI, using our words. That's a fantastic parallel. It under, underscores the whole point. Hmm. The quality of our language shapes the output. The clearer, the more precise our instructions. The better the magic. Right. It's not just technical commands. It's effective communication. And this whole focus on communication seems to be pushing prompt engineering towards becoming more formalized, standardized. I think so. This document feels like a big step in that direction. It suggests we're moving past just clever hacks towards um, a proper discipline with actual rules and best practices emerging. Like it's becoming a recognized skill set. The document even points out that in professional circles, often the best AI results come from better prompts, not necessarily some secret better AI model. That's a really critical observation. It puts the focus back on human skill guiding the machine. Even the smartest AI needs good instructions. Mastering prompting gives you a real edge. Okay, so it's not just about asking basic questions well. The document also gets into fine-tuning the models themselves. Things like uh, temperature and talk. Yeah, it touches on those. We don't need to get lost in the weeds today, but it's part of the bigger picture. Understanding how those settings control things like, say, creativity versus logic. Or stopping the AI from just repeating itself over and over. Exactly. It's about having more granular control, making the AI behave in specific ways that suit your task. But the really juicy stuff, I thought, was the specific techniques it laid out. Agreed. Let's dive into those. First up was chain of thought prompting. They called it a tipping point. Right. So chain of thought. Basically, instead of just asking for the answer, you ask the AI to uh, think out loud, show it's working. Okay. So not just what's the answer, but how did you get the answer? Precisely. The example they gave was great that age riddle. When I was three, my partner was three times my age. You know the one. Now I'm 20. How old is my partner? Yeah. And if you just ask it straight. It often messes up, jumps to 60 or 63, right? It yeah. just multiplies the current age by three, misses <laughs> the logic. If you add something simple like Reflect step by step mm. or explain your reasoning. Boom. Total different outcome. The AI actually walks through it. 
Okay, when speaker was three, partner was nine. The age difference is six years. Speaker is now 20, so partner is 20 plus six, 26. It finds the correct answer just by being asked to show its steps. That's kind of wild. It's incredibly powerful because now you see how it got there. You can spot errors in the reasoning. Right, you can understand it, maybe even correct it if it goes slightly off track. It builds trust and reliability. Hugely improved reliability, especially for anything complex. And the best part, this isn't some niche trick. No special setup needed. Nope. Works across basically all the major LLMs, ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, you name it, out of the box. So listeners can literally try this right now. Just add, think step by step to their next query. Absolutely. It's probably the single easiest way to immediately get better, more reliable AI answers. They also mentioned combining it with uh, few shot prompting giving examples first. Yeah, that can boost it even more. You show the AI a couple of examples of how to reason through similar problems, then you ask your question using chain of thought, like giving it a worked example before the test. Makes sense. And using chain of thought makes the prompt work better across different AIs too, right? More robust. That's another big plus. Consistency. A good chain of thought prompt for one model is much more likely to work well on another. Is there a downside? Like longer answers maybe? Well, yes, the answers are longer because it's explaining itself. So technically, it might use more tokens if you're paying per token. But worth it for the accuracy. Almost always, I'd say. Especially in chat interfaces where you're not usually counting every single token, the quality jump is significant. Okay, so bottom line for chain of thought. If a problem needs step-by-step -step thinking, get the AI to do it explicitly. Better quality, more reliable, you understand why. Couldn't have said it better myself. It aligns the AI's process more closely with how we often think. All right, so that's chain of thought. But then the document introduces tree of thought. Sounds yeah. branchier. Huh, exactly. It's like the next level up from that single lineal chain. Tree of thought lets the AI explore multiple reasoning paths at the same time. Multiple paths, how does that work? Imagine at each step of the reasoning, instead of just going down one path, the AI considers several different options or possibilities and kind of branches out to explore each one for a bit. Okay, so it's like having several parallel lines of thought going simultaneously. Pretty much. Think about planning a trip. Chain of thought might give you one itinerary. Tree of thought could explore, say, three different routes, maybe comparing flying versus driving for one leg, different hotel types for another, all in parallel. Ah, okay. So it's useful when there isn't just one single right way to think about something or lots of possible good answers. Exactly. Or for tasks that require exploring alternatives. The document hinted it might be particularly good for um, more creative tasks. Right, where logical AI might sometimes be linear, like brainstorming story ideas or marketing angles. Perfect examples. Letting the AI explore a wider possibility space using tree of thought could lead to more novel or unexpected ideas compared to just following one chain. Interesting. It definitely sounds like it opens up more complex problem solving. It does. And it naturally leads into the next major technique they discuss, which is react. React. Okay. R E act reason plus act. So the AI starts doing things. That's the core idea. It's not just thinking anymore. It's thinking and interacting with the outside world. It follows a loop, think, then act, then observe the result of the action, then readjust its thinking. Whoa. Okay. Unpack act. What kind of actions are we talking about? Using tools. So the AI might reason using chain or tree of thought that it needs more information. The act part would be it using, say, a web search tool. Or accessing a database, yeah. running a bit of code. Exactly. It uses an external tool to get data or perform a task. Then it observes the output. What did the search return? What was the result of the code? And then it loops back to think, refining its plan based on that new information. And the document says this is the basis for autonomous AI agents. Precisely. This loop is what allows an agent to perceive, reason, and act towards a goal, potentially without needing constant human input. It can gather information, use tools, and adapt its strategy. They mentioned tools like Python, Langchain, Vertex AI being used to build these capabilities like web searching. Right. So an AI agent tasked with, say, planning that Italy trip using React might think, I need flight prices, act, use a flight search API, observe, get prices and schedules, think again. Okay, option A is cheaper but have a layover. Option B is direct but pricier, which fits the user's stated priorities better. Maybe act again. Check hotel availability for option A dates. It's dynamic. That makes sense. And they list examples like Manus, James, Spark. 
DeepMind agents. These are all built on this kind of reason plus act framework. In various forms, yes. They leverage this ability to interact with tools and environments to perform much more complex multi-step tasks than just generating text. It's pretty incredible that these advanced agent capabilities yeah. really boil down to improvements in how we structure the prompts and the reasoning process. It really highlights how fundamental prompt engineering is becoming. It's not just about getting better sentences. It's enabling entirely new ways for AI to operate and interact. Wow. Okay, well, this has been seriously insightful. We've really yeah. dug into why this new document, this prompting Bible, is causing such a stir. Yeah, it feels like a marker for the field maturing. Definitely. It drives home that talking effectively to AI using smart prompts isn't just for coders anymore. We hit on chain of thought. Getting the AI to think step by step. Tree of thought. Exploring multiple reasoning paths at once and react. Where the AI reasons and takes actions using tools. Wow. Groundwork for agents. And just understanding these concepts, even at a high level, gives everyone, gives our listeners, way more power to get better results from AI. Absolutely, it demystifies it a bit. These are frameworks you can actually start playing with. For sure, and seriously, if you take away one thing today, try that chain of thought. Just add, think step by step, or explain your reasoning, see what happens. It's a simple change with often surprising results. It really makes you wonder, though, if this is where prompt engineering is now, with techniques like React emerging, <laughs> what's next? That's the big question, isn't it? The field is moving so fast. Mastering how we communicate with AI seems like it's only going to become more crucial. Who knows what capabilities are just over the horizon, unlocked by the next breakthrough in prompting. A provocative thought to end on. This has been great. Thanks for breaking it all down. My pleasure. It's fascinating stuff. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in for this deep dive.